Well, let's see if we can find a tiller handle. Ooh, somebody got eaten in the wood pile. Poor little bunny. That's what happens in nature. You get eaten or you do the eating. This is pretty much all my extra oak. This back stack here is hickory. Uh, when we had the caterpillars come through a couple years ago, they killed a lot of the hardwoods. So I cut a lot of the oaks, all the white oaks that died got cut for the boat. A lot of red oaks got cut for uh, some lumber for a friend. And there was one really big hickory tree. So that's what's back there. I definitely don't have a need for it on the project. I've got some more oak up at the boatyard that's been selected. This is all seconds. As you can see, a couple of them are pretty nice. Uh, so if you are interested in purchasing some oak, reach out. I'd love to find a good home for this stuff. But today I am hunting for a tiller handle. So I usually have three or four projects all at the same time. So I'm working on getting the prop shaft in, I'm working on the companionway, and I'm working on hatches. And now I'm gonna add the tiller to the list. Really all I wanna do today is find a couple blanks that are good for the tiller, cut them out of this 20 foot long hickory stock, get them in the bed of the truck, bring them up, stick them in the boathouse, and let them sit for a while as shorter boards. I think this is my board. So this is out of the base of the tree and it is dead center because this is the pith. And this is why you don't want to include pith when you're doing woodworking, if you can avoid it. You can see how it's checked and cracked and broken right around that. But by cutting these the way we did and boxing this pith, I have a beautiful quarter sawn run here and I have a beautiful quarter sawn run here and this piece of timber is wide enough to get the tiller out of half of this, no problem. And it's long enough that I easily have two tiller lengths in it. So in theory, this one chunk of hickory could give me four tillers. So I think I'm gonna cut it in half and bring all four pieces, or all two pieces up to the boathouse, split them down the middle in the pith with the bandsaw, and then stick those four pieces in the corner and let them start to dry out a little bit more. And uh, in a little bit, we'll run them through the planer and make them even smaller. Hickory is traditionally used for tool handles. Um, you, its grain is all crazy and interlocked, so it's really strong. Uh, and that's why they use it for sledgehammer handles, for axe handles. It does a really good job of dampening the vibrations. And it's always good to have a spare tiller. You can tuck it in the lazarette. It doesn't take up much room. So we're also going to make one out of ash, which we have some nice ash slabs down at the house. And then we'll, you know, we'll see which one we like better. And uh, the other one will go into reserve. But my money's on the hickory. thinking this is going to be my piece. It's amazing the difference between, uh, I wouldn't even call all of the sapwood. I mean, to say the outer bit here is, but the heartwood and hickory is, is a lot darker. And maybe we can play with that, kind of like put a little strip of uh, lighter wood in the top or the bottom, depending on how the, the tiller handle lays out. 
So I'm gonna let these just sit as is for a while uh, and see if they check or see if they move. I'm optimistic that they're gonna behave pretty well. And then one of these days we'll get a rough pattern for the tiller and knock one or two of these down a little bit smaller and let that sit for a while and keep picking away at it. But I think this will do. Hey, I'm Aiden Baird. Um, I'm pretty new here to New England and I'm really excited to be working with Steve on Acorn to Arabella. Uh, I haven't been following the project for that long, but my brother's been following it for years and got me hooked on it. So super excited to be here and bring my unique set of combination of skills here. I do videography. I have a background as a carpenter and I've been building vans and doing lots of other things. So it's fun to kind of bring everything together here uh, in a way that's super useful. So this is it in its unfinished beauty. We have a yet to be installed ceiling. Don't look at the ceiling, Ben, cut that out. Ben, don't. <laughs> it's the, like, I'm showing it anyway. <laughs> the most recent thing I put in is this wall panel and we have some systems going on and <laughs> the, we have the bed rail here matches a bed rail over here a sink is coming my favorite part in this van is i have this piece of pine that my brother milled on his old property back in colorado so we have a little live edge here the van <laughs> yeah you should be seeing me around uh, at least until launch so We'll see this thing through, you know, it's good work, it's hard work, and it's this really incredible transformation of the woods out back into this amazing boat, and Steve is the conduit for that, um, and now we get to help him and be that ourselves, and yeah, the fact that he's taking something in its raw form from the tree and all that work that takes that it takes to turn that into something that you can actually put in the water is unbelievable and the fact that he's almost done is really really cool i don't know the boat jargon um that's another language and has a book for me um and yeah there's no straight lines here so fitting things in everything's a, a fun challenge every day is going to be different here whether we're doing electrical, um, working with wood, milling wood, um, creating cabinets, um, lots and lots of sanding in our future. My first project that I'm taking on is getting the portholes ready to accept these, which are from Victoria. So to do that, I created a template, which is the same as this back piece. Um, and with some double-sided tape, mounted that on the inside and took one flush cut router and did the inside and then took this second flush cut router um, from the outside and did that. So it was all one level-ish plane. Uh, a jigsaw was used previously to cut the portholes out. So there's some variance, but it's all gonna get filled with epoxy that's going to seal the end grain and then make a lot of some of the undulations um, even. And the other porthole that we're putting in are these big ones that are going on the front. Um, this side is going to face into the boat. So our challenge with these is this flare here, the flange on the inside of the window is angled about five degrees. What I did for that was routed it out so it was nice and clean and then came back with a grinder with a flap wheel on it and smoothed it all out and set that angle on the bottom and the window popped in super nicely and sits flush with no gaps and uh, so yeah now it's time to go epoxy everything and get it ready to 
put these in and uh yeah exciting <laughs> it's real it's a boat with windows or portholes is that what you call them i don't know i'm new here wow. okay that's pretty perfect now we just need to epoxy up both of these so one of the issues that we were running into smoothing these out and cutting these holes so there's these brass nails. This one. <laughs> we get the whole nail. So we hit those with the router, with the jigsaw that was used previously. And so these bits are a little sacrificial and they didn't end up being too much of an issue. And we're one little step closer. So here we go. Today we're getting ready for 80 high school students to show up here at the boat shed. Yeah, we'll see how this goes. 80 students all at once. I'm sure it'll be fine. I need folks and cash to go over by that plow. Yeah, buddy. That was made in Rochester, New York in the 1920s, and that's been running industrial almost ever since. I bought it early on in the project and did a, took about three months to do a full restoration on it. 
So that's running on Babbit bearings. Does anybody know what a Babbit bearing is? Nope. Nope. Does anyone know how modern bearings work? No. Nope. So ball bearings, are you familiar with those? Yeah. Yeah. So if you got a shaft, normally you have a whole bunch of little bearings, little balls around it that are lubricated, and that lets that shaft spin. Before we figured out that kind of machining and tolerance, they used Babbitt bearings, and it's basically a, a lead alloy, and you put the shaft in a casing, and you pour molten metal into it, and you create a casting around it. You open that up, smooth it out, and it runs in an oil bath. So every 20, 50 years, depending on how much use, that machine needs to be taken apart, the Babbitt ground out, and re-poured. But it's one of the neat things about those old machines is it will run pretty much indefinitely. So if it gets taken care of, one of your great, great grandkids could still be <laughs> cutting lumber on it someday. So watch your step and we can come on upstairs. There's a distinct lack of railings, so be careful. When this is done, how are you gonna get it out of here? It's an excellent question. So a whole building's gonna come down. Got to build cribbing around the boat. The boat will weigh somewhere around 25 to 28,000 pounds when it's done. And we have to spin it so that its stem here is faced about that way. And then a 18 wheeler will come in here with a special trailer. It's basically a big U and it's on hydraulics like a low rider. And the trailer will back up, drop right down to the ground around the boat. And it has four articulated arms that re reaches out and cradles the boat. Then they slide these big beams underneath the boat from side of trailer to side of the trailer, press the button on the hydraulics, everything lifts up, and she'll do 70 miles an hour down the Mass Pike to the ocean, which will be terrifying. Yeah. yeah. Are you scared of it falling and putting it in the water? No, I mean, I, what would failure look like? I don't know, it might break, it might sink. It won't break. That, that I am quite sure of, and I'm also quite sure it won't sink. Um, it will leak, uh, but we'll have pumps to keep up with that, and when we launch, it'll go out of a, a truck or a trailer, uh, travel lift kind of deal, where we can set it in the water and make sure nothing's gushing. And if it is gushing, we take it out and fix it. And that's one of the beauties of a wooden boat like this is all of the pieces are individual. So the, the boat is, is basically infinitely replaceable. You can take the whole thing apart and, and fix it. Where did the name Arabella come from? I just like it. Yeah, there's no, there's no great story there. They say there's a story behind everything else for the boat, so the name can be a name. I just like the sound of it. I feel like it fits the boat well. How did you, like obviously down there, there's a lot of curvature to the planks. Yeah. I'd imagine it end to end they aren't parallel so how do you get like a twist on it like what machine do you have to kind of put that torsion on a board really uh yeah so the the first step is cutting the correct shaped board if you were to take a perfectly straight board and bend it onto the hull it'll make this big smiley face and it's going to be feet higher at one end than the other so what you do is you create a board that's a frown face and then when you bend it onto the boat, it will curve up into a nicer shape. So that's the first part of the trick. Cool. Well, thanks for visiting. Thank you. Thank you. So we got on buses to come out here to uh, see the Arabella. We were really curious to see uh, how it was doing and, you know, what, how it was really made. Yeah. Uh, what do you like to make? Uh, cookies. <laughs> um, <coughs> food, really. I like to make food. Cool. Yeah. Nice. It's a lot bigger than I thought. And uh, when he was talking about something across the world, that was very cool. Yeah. Um, have you watched a lot of the videos? or? Uh, a few? I watched, yeah, I watched like one or two. And yeah. I think it was like talking about like the hardness of the woods. And we talked about that a lot in class because like we take a CAD class and we were talking about that. Yeah, materials science is a big part of it, like knowing what all the different kinds of woods can do and what they're capable of. Yeah. Um, was there anything surprising here today that you didn't expect? Um, no. <laughs> um, do you think it's a good thing that we've been on YouTube and stuff like that to do this sort of thing? Has it been helpful for you in some way, or was it, you know? <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's like, what should I say? All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I think I mean, I think it's one thing to, you know, just see some pictures of a boat. But it's also another thing to see the process of it, you know, 
start from just <laughs> trees and then you know you, you slowly build yourself up to a, a wonderful product. Oh, thanks man. There's a little bit of carnage last night. The boathouse is fine, thankfully. Um, but Kiva's doghouse roof lost some of its plastic. I had to repair that. The gate on Bachelor Street got blown open, ripped the screws right out of the gate. And our uh, tarp roof here for the lumber got moved, which I haven't seen that happen before. I've seen the tarp get pulled off, but I've never seen this framework actually get shoved all around. So it is frigidly cold this morning, and I'm gonna take that opportunity to put this pile back to rights and do a few physical things, because it is uh, this is tough weather to be doing any detail work. Since this is all blown up and opened up anyways, I'm gonna pick through the ash here and see if I can find a chunk for the tiller. Two, 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 two. One, two, two, two. All right, well, seems like we got two inches to work with. Which actually, that might be too thin for the tiller. I gotta go double check that. Let's go look. So right here, tiller, two and a half by three and a half. So I guess we are not gonna make an ash tiller because I don't have ash thick enough. That's okay though. I've got the hickory and uh, we'll follow the plans and do one out of white oak, uh, which is also in that pile. So instead of finding a piece of ash, let's go find a piece of oak. Well, I sometimes get asked if the winter is hard. And honestly, for me, usually it's not that bad. I do all right with the cold, the heat. Oh man, the heat destroys me when it gets really hot. Uh, but I think we reached the limit today. It's single digits and I can't get the microphone to work. So right now it's the microphone just off the phone and I have ice forming in my beard. Um, so, I'm gonna go see if it's any warmer inside the boat. I've been running the heater for a little bit, but I still think in single digits is probably futile. I came out this morning and we were here, zero, one degrees, something like that. And almost three hours later, we are now at 20 degrees. And that's with the propane heater running full bore in here. So I think it is futile. I think at this point we're just wasting propane. So. I'm going to go shut that down, do a little cleaning in here while it's, you know, 20 degrees uh, and uh, call it a day. Tomorrow's supposed to be 45. It's supposed to warm up dramatically. Uh, so that'll make a huge difference. And I guess I'll go work on taxes. Wah, wah, wah. I don't like that. Time's ticking. I'm going to make use of every day, but this is, uh, this is pretty rugged today. A little, little too chilly. What a pain. Bill's here. Uh, I work mainly as a videographer, um, but I have a background in carpentry and yeah, mobile yacht building from sprinter vans to transits. And so yeah, I think I'm a good fit here. <laughs> I might do that one more time. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you gotta get the first one no, out of the way. No, it's good. <laughs> Just kidding. Go for it. You can do whatever you want. That's fine. Cool. Hey everyone, I'm Aiden Baird, and I'm the new guy here at Acorn to Arabella.